<laughs> what are they doing to me? Oh my god, what are they? Holy sh**. Michael right here raise your hand Michael okay he's gonna pull up here if you've been on this trail before with us and you want to go down to to run Widowmaker Hill um, let, let's follow him other than that if you haven't been on I'd like you to stay stay back with me because I want to step you through this obstacle the first one's a very challenging and if you're not comfortable with it you could get intimidated uh, I don't want anybody leaving here scared it's a challenging obstacle but it's nothing you can't handle and I'll step you through it is a fun trail you're gonna get challenged a couple times you're gonna be spotted don't ever be afraid to ask any questions concerns stop and say I need help if you're if you're completely uncomfortable we get it we've all been there everybody started somewhere um, I remember spotting Judy up a hill that that I'm now she just drives up like it's nothing um, but but really, it's a really fun drive. It won't be very fast. We'll, there'll be a lot of stop and go. There'll be times when you're stopped and you're going, what's going on? Then either Rob's spotting over the radio. There's a couple areas where we'll get a little bit of uh, three wheel action, a little tilty tilty. It's a lot of fun. We're not going to put you in any situations that you could immediately roll your rig or get yourselves in trouble. The whole idea of this is to get you off road for the first time get you comfortable and really decide if this is something that's for you you know it's not for everybody but be prepared for a really fun day we'll stop we'll talk about goat mows we'll talk about a number of things just have fun ask questions no questions a stupid question um, nobody's gonna look down on anybody who doesn't know what they're doing um, we just want you to be safe and have a great time any questions I'm gonna talk through it a little bit right now you can just leave it two-wheel drive when we get to the first obstacle, I'm going to have you put it in four low. Not that you need it, but what that does is that gears it down, allows you to go slower down the obstacle and stuff like that. Um, we'll follow that down the down the hill, down to the creek. Once we get down to the creek, then I'll then I'll have you shift into four high, and then we'll we'll talk we'll we'll do a, a basically a, a parking lot type photo type thing. We'll line up everybody down in the creek, get a nice roll call video or photo. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit more. I've got some, some brochures to hand out, talks about the, the different equipment, stuff like that, some of the apps that are available, and some of the other things to, to learn about four-wheeling. Um, other than that, I think we're ready to get going. Is there any questions before we head out? Okay, did everybody get a radio? We're on channel seven.
All right, so I am here right now with the Arizona Bronco group, and we're actually doing Ruby's Newbies, and this is my first time gonna be doing Sycamore Creek a little bit past the shooting base. And uh, we're all piled up and we're ready to go right now. So hopefully I can film a little bit during this trip, but I don't really know if I'm gonna be able to or not. As you guys might have seen on my channel before, this isn't the first time I've been on a run with the Arizona Bronco Club. The moderators of the Facebook group, Rob, Carrie, and Graham, will often hold an intro to off-roading trail run. Although they are really good about making sure that others feel comfortable on the trail, they really outdo themselves with this run that they call Ruby's Newbies. The name of the run comes from Carrie's two-door Sasquatch-based Bronco that she lovingly named Ruby after its red color. After years of off-roading, they continue to do the Ruby's Newbies trail run out at Tonto National Forest on the Sycamore Creek Trail. This video is gonna be a more of a highlight of my trip rather than their full instruction. However, they did go over many different aspects of off-roading and features of the Broncos. Unfortunately, some of their instruction was cut short on this run because we ended up having 38 people on this trip. 33 big Broncos, two Bronco Sports, two Jeeps, and one F-150 Raptor. So because of the fact that we had so many people, which is awesome, made it a little bit difficult to pull everyone over on the trail to inform us about things like trail etiquette with hand signals, right-of-ways on the trail, as well as recovery equipment and modifications that are important to off-roading on your Bronco. Of course, if you want a more informative video that showcases their instruction on the trail, let me know in the comments down below. However, with that being said, we are about to make it to our first obstacle on the run, which also turns out to be the most difficult. They're navigating everybody down right now um, to, into the wash. I'm a little bit nervous just because all the big Broncos with their um, 35 inch tires and the, the Steve, where you at, the group? clearance they have. I don't have that, so they say I can do it though, but I'm a little bit nervous for what we're about to do because I have a feeling we're gonna be on three wheels and teetering, but I don't know, maybe it's not as bad as everything That's else. Fine, uh, I'm a little bit nervous for what we're, we're about to do, but I'm with them, I trust them. We'll see what happens. Shit. Oh my god. All right, so what I'm gonna do, you're gonna hold that line, actually a little more passenger. Okay. Okay, right, right there would probably be good. Okay. Um, and as you, at, once you drop down and, and at the side level's out there, then you're gonna go a little bit left. Just stay stay right of that, that ledge. See the, the up here? Okay. Just, just make sure you stay in there. So I'm gonna go a little bit passenger and just yep. kind of go straight yeah, you're, out. Yeah, you, you're gonna straddle it more than I'm doing with anybody else because I don't want you flexing too much. Okay. All right. Okay. Driver. Perfect. Straighten her out. Good job. That was, that was, oh, that was nervous. I, I, that was, that was crazy. I have no words. really see 
how steep of an incline that is and how like far we were coming down like how how much of a drop it was but i mean look at that <laughs> i didn't think it was possible but we made it we made it gets by like nothing. To pull that thing back up, basically you're going to want to, don't roll or anything, don't, don't roll it forward, don't roll either, but you're not going to. Alright, so to correct the situation, if you don't don't roll it, but steer right, we're going to drive that tire up that other side, so go ahead and go passenger. Oh, yeah. Start steering before you yeah, yeah, start steering before you roll, because it's, it's going to make it drop a little bit of itself. Okay, there you go, now you can start rolling forward, it's going to start, it's, there you go, you're good. Look at that, beautiful pick, man. <laughs> Awesome. Okay, once it levels out, straighten out your right. wheel and then head on down the hill. A little driver, 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 a little more driver. There you go. Little driver. Perfect. How was that? <laughs> I got some videos, I got some photos, I got everything. That's awesome. Perfect. Great job. There was a moment when I was walking back with Rob that I didn't catch on camera. I was telling him that if I were out on the trails by myself and came across an obstacle like this, I would automatically assume that this is Big Bronco territory. Something that a Sasquatch package Bronco is capable of doing without a doubt, and that my little sport would struggle with ruts so deep. Rob simply reminded me that the capability of the vehicle isn't always as important as people makes it seem. An experienced driver who has good wheel placement and takes a proper line can make it through some pretty difficult obstacles. Also, the Bronco Sports are way more capable than people give them credit for. Finally made it over to Widow's Manor. Yes, that is the name of this big hill. I really wanted to attempt it, and others said my sport should be more than capable of making it up that hill, but my response was, I'm sure my car can, but the driver cannot, at least not today.
Perry also displayed what trail turn assist was on the big Broncos. When activated, when the wheel is fully turned, the inside back tire locks, allowing for tighter turns on the trails. Actually heard a little bit of skidding on the skid plates there, but uh, not a slam. I was kind of rolling off of it. There was only one other moment that might have been slightly difficult for me, but it's only because I may or may not have taken the wrong line when trying to do this bit of a decline. That big rock right there was about to be a problem for me. Rock. That was a slam. All right, slammed pretty hard on that, but we're through. <laughs> Thankfully, there was no real damage to my car, and the skid plates did their job and took intense. the impact. I was a little worried though after because shortly before this, about a month before this. I had ended up taking a hit just like that, but I ended up cracking my evap canister. So I was a little bit concerned, but everything was all right. This trail is also quite scenic and actually very simple in terms of its route. We end up doing a big loop and getting back to where we started. Eventually we made it back to the start and we were airing up our tires and it was time to say goodbye. If you're in Arizona and have a Bronco, big, small, or old, this is a fantastic way to find out what you're made of because you know your vehicle can handle this trail. It's a great introduction to the hobby of off-roading and Rob, Graham, and Carrie are fantastic at leading these groups. And if you don't have a Bronco, you have a Jeep, a 4Runner, or a truck, they don't discriminate and you're more than welcome to come out and try it as well.